In this tutorial, we will get through step-by-step -step designing a RF rectifier circuit using advanced design system software. We will begin by defining RF rectifiers and their topologies, and then move on to the software environment for designing. RF rectifiers are type of circuits that are used to convert RF signals into the output DC. They are essential in applications like wireless power transfer and energy harvesting systems. It is important for energy harvesters to use a rectifier circuit to convert the RF signal into DC voltage at the output. Specifically, it consists of a matching network, a voltage rectifier circuit using Schottky diodes, and a DC output filter. The input impedance of rectifier circuit varies with frequency and input power. So we need a matching circuit between antenna and rectifier circuit. Power conversion efficiency, or PCE, is the most important of parameters for rectifiers, as it determines how much power is transferred from the receiving antenna to the load. It can be calculated as shown equation. In this equation, V out is the output voltage, R load in the load resistant, and P in is the input power. Different topologies can be used faux rectifiers, single stage rectifiers using shunt or series diode. These circuits use a single rectification stage, often consisting of a diode and capacitor. They're simpler but may have lower conversion efficiency and output voltage compared to multi-stage designs. Or, voltage doublers and multipliers. These topologies use specific arrangements of diodes and capacitors to amplify the output voltage without requiring additional RF input power. They are common in applications where higher output voltage is necessary. In this video, we are going to use this topology to design a RF rectifier. Let's get started. At the first step, we need to create a schematic to define the diode model. We can bring the diode in its model from the palette and add the diode specification and model section. These values can be taken from the data sheet. In this design, we have used the SMS 7621 from Skyworks. There are some parasitic elements around the diode that should be considered to have a more accurate model. We consider a 0.25 picofarad for a shunt capacitor and 0.7 nano Henry series inductor.
We add two pins to be able to create a symbol from the diode and use it at the rest of design process. In order to determine the optimal load resistance and input power for maximum efficiency, and calculating the input impedance associated with those values, we need to create a separate schematic. In this schematic, we use the doubler voltage topology with two diodes, a series capacitor, and an RC filter at the output. We can add the diode model from the library tab. We can get into the diode symbol using the shown tab and observe the defined model. Since the diodes are the nonlinear device harmonic balance analyzer, should be utilized. The parameters should be defined. Here we're going to design at 1.8 GHz. And one tone frequency from the frequency source parts is used as an input excitation. At the harmonic balance windows, we need to set the work frequency and sweep frequency that in this design it has been shown by FR. Input impedance of the circuit should be defined as a variable parameter, and along with the input power and load resistance should be tuned simultaneously. We have tuned these values, you can see the optimal values here. As you see the input power should be 5 dBm and load resistor should be 2700 ohm. The model defined in the first schematic is used as diode model and it helps to get an accurate result.
The values for input impedance that is shown by R for real part and X for imaginary part in this design has been tuned in a way to get the highest efficiency. A name net is defined at the output to measure the output voltage, and a current probe from the probe component also can be used to calculate the output power by current and voltage. After simulation is done, a new page for plotting is opened. Based on the formula for power conversion efficiency, it can be defined as an equation, then easily it can be plotted. But it should be considered that the input power should be entered in what? As you can see by choosing these values, around 77% efficiency can be attained at 1.8 GHz. After determining the input imptance, we need to design a matching network to convert this imptance to the 50 ohm of source. For this we can use the Smith chart tools of software. We need to bring the Smith chart from the parts. From the tools menu, we can choose the Smith chart to, to open a new window that provides useful tools to design a matching network. In this window, we can set the frequency, load, and source impedances and choose different items to design and observing the moving of the impedance in Smith chart and S parameters simultaneously. In order to deliver the maximum power, we need to convert the source impedance to the conjugate of calculated impedance. Using a short circuit stub and a series microstrip line with specified length, and impedance, a good matching performance is achieved.
By choosing the build circuit, a new schematic with ideal microstrip line is created. Since we are going to design a real matching network, these ideal lines should be converted to the real microstrip lines. For this, we need to define a substrate and calculate the microstrip line parameters. In this design, we will use RO4003 with a 20 mil thickness and 3.55 dielectric constant. In order to calculate the microstrip lines parameters, we can use the line calc from tools menu. In open window, we can change the length and width units. After entering the substrate specifications and impedance, electrical length provided by Smith chart tools, we will have the width and length of each section.
In order to measure the S parameters of the circuit, we need to connect a 50 ohm port at the input and conjugate of calculated impedance at the first step at output and add a S parameter analyzer. Also, we can add a 50 ohm microstrip line at the input since it is not going to change the network performance. We dactive the ideal lines and simulate the design. In new windows, we can choose the S11 and S12 as the desired parameters to plot. We should set the frequency range properly in S parameter analyzer. As we can see, the reasonable results for the circuit in desired frequency is obtained. At the final stage of the design, we need to open a new schematic. In order to bring the designed matching network to the final stage, we can create a symbol from the matching network schematic. It is done by adding the two pins at the input and output of the circuit. At the final design, we put all the matching network and voltage double circuit together. It can be done by adding the defined symbols from the library section.
The value for the component are similar to the circuit designed at the first step. Harmonic Balance Analyzer is used to extract the most important parameters. And one tone frequency source is utilized as a source to excite the circuit at desired frequency and input power. As we calculated at the first stage, the highest efficiency is achieved when the 5 dBm is applied as an input power. After simulation, in new window we define again the power conversion efficiency equation, like the one we did at first. As you can see at 1.8 gigahertz, the efficiency is 74%. In order to assess the circuit in terms of impedance matching performance, we need to add a large signal as parameters analyzer and set the frequency sweep.
The plotted S11 confirms that the design circuit has been matched well. We are done with the simulation. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.